To determine the potential difference between points A and B of this circuit, you will first notice that this circuit contains just a single battery. And there is a nice three-step method that you can follow for single battery circuits, which we have outlined below. In step one, we're going to reduce the circuit to a single resistor. In step two, we will calculate the total current. And then in step three, we will work backwards to our original circuit. And as we do so, we will follow these two rules right here. More on those rules later on in the problem. So for step one, reduce the circuit to a single resistor. We will begin by noticing that those two resistors are in series with one another. And whenever we have a series combination, we can determine the equivalent resistance by simply adding the resistance values. So, in other words, the equivalent resistance of those two series resistors will be 5 ohms plus 20 ohms. So, of course, this gives us an equivalent resistance of 25 ohms. Now, once you find that, what you're going to want to do is redraw the circuit, but combine those two resistors into a single equivalent resistor. It will look something like the following. So we've gone ahead and again, we've combined the two resistors that were in series into this equivalent resistor over here, marked 25 ohms. Continuing the process of reducing this circuit to a single resistor, we will next notice that these three resistors right here are connected in parallel with one another. And to determine the equivalent resistance of a parallel combination is a little trickier. We follow this equation where we have 1 over the equivalent resistance is equal to 1 over the first resistance plus 1 over the second resistance and so on. So what we'll do is we'll plug in our three resistance values into this equation doesn't really matter which one you call R1, R2, etc. We'll just go left to right. So R1 would be 10 ohms, 1 over 10 ohms, plus 1 over 5 ohms, plus 1 over the 25 ohms. Pick up your calculator and add those three fractions together. When you do so, you will get 0.34. I like to put the 0.34 over a 1, and then to solve for REQ, you can actually reciprocate or basically flip both sides of the equation. So if you flip the left side, you get REQ over 1, which is just REQ. And then if you flip the other side, you get 1 divided by 0.34, and that turns out to be 2.94 approximately, and that will be in ohms. So let's go ahead and redraw the circuit yet again and combine those three parallel resistors. And so there we have it. We combine the three resistors that's, that are circled above here into a single equivalent resistor of 2.94 ohms resistance value. We have one more step here. We have these two resistors. These are connected in series. Some people might think they're in parallel because of the way they're drawn, but notice that if I start at the 10 ohm resistor and I draw a pathway from 10 ohms to the 2.94 ohms, I can draw one continuous line between the two resistance values, I never reach what is called a junction. A junction would be if you saw another portion of the circuit traveling off in this direction or traveling off in that direction. But there are no junctions, and so these two are indeed in series. And we learned earlier that when you have a series combination, you just add them together to get the equivalent resistance. So here we go, the equivalent resistance will be 10 ohms plus the 2.94 ohms and this, of course, will give us 12.94 ohms. So we'll redraw the circuit one more time. That way we have reduced it to a single equivalent resistor. And so the circuit would look like this. We've got our 25 volt battery and then our 12.94 ohm resistance. That's step one of the problem. Recall that in step two, you're going to calculate the total current. And to calculate the total current, you basically use Ohm's law. Remember, Ohm's law was delta V is equal to current times resistance. If you divide both sides of this equation by resistance, then you can see that the resistances would cancel, and therefore the current would equal the potential difference divided by the resistance. So we know the potential difference supplied by the battery is 25 volts. The resistance is... 12.94 ohms. 
Let's divide these two quantities. And when we do so, we get 1.93, and this will be in amps. So this is the total current flowing through the circuit. You can imagine current exiting the battery and traveling in this direction. And again, that value is 1.93 amps worth of current. Now we move on to step three. And when we apply this step, we work backwards through our drawings to the original circuit. And we follow these two rules. When you work backwards and you are working back to parallel resistors, then you're going to bring the voltage value. But then when you're working backwards to series resistors, you'll bring the current. Those are very important rules. Let's see how they work. So here we have our single resistor circuit. We're going to be working backwards. So try to imagine moving up the page right now. And when we move up the page, we'll be moving backwards here to a series arrangement. And according to our rules, when we do that, we're going to bring the current value with us, this 1.93 amps. So let's move back up to this drawing and let's bring with us the 1.93 amps worth of current. Now, we can actually answer part A of this question because it wanted the potential difference between points A and points B. Well, conveniently, you'll notice there's only one resistor between those two points. We have the resistance value of that resistor, 2.94 ohms, and we have the amount of current that's flowing through it. If you look at the picture, it's going to be the 1.93 amps. So we can actually calculate the potential difference using those two values. So we do that by applying Ohm's law. Remember, we have the resistance value and we have the current. Why don't we come over here? We know that the potential difference, therefore, between those two points, A and B, is going to equal the current multiplied by the resistance. So we just take the current and then multiply it by that resistance. And when we compute this, we shall get about 5.68. And this will come out in volts. So this is actually the correct answer to part A of the question. Let's look at part B. Part B wants us to determine the current in the 20 ohm resistor. Okay, so the 20 ohm resistor was all the way back in the original picture. So this is going to take a little extra work here. So let's continue moving backwards through the circuit. We are now going, let's clean this up a little bit here. We're going to move backwards, if you look very carefully, from this resistor right here, backwards up to those three. Remember it was those three that we combined to create this single resistor. So moving backwards, in this case, moves us backwards to parallel resistors, parallel resistors. And we said that when you move back to parallel resistors, you should bring the volts with you. Now the volts we know is 5.68. We just determined that volt value or that potential difference for this resistor. So you're going to bring backwards with you the 5.68 volts that we just determined. So that means that each one of those resistors is 5.68 volts. So we'll mark all of them as 5.68 volts. A little cluttered in there. Okay, now we're getting there. What I want to do next is I want to calculate the amount of current that's traveling through this resistor right here. I choose this resistor because that's the one that was derived from the 5 ohm and 20 ohm resistors at the beginning of the problem. So we're going to get the current there, and then we're going to use it to our advantage. We know that the current flowing through there can be determined because we have the volts and the resistance. So once again, we apply Ohm's law, delta V is equal to I times R. We actually saw earlier that that can be rearranged to say that the current is equal to delta V over R. The delta V is 5.68 volts, and the resistance is 25 ohms. So when we divide those out, we're going to get 0.227 amps. That's how much current is flowing through this 25 ohm resistor. Finally, we move backwards, and we move backwards from 25 ohms to these two. We can see from the diagram that we're moving backwards to a series arrangement. So when you move backwards to a series arrangement, then you're going to be bringing the current with you. 
So let's take that 0.227 amps of current that we just determined and move backwards, bring it with us to the series arrangement. Well, that actually means that the current flowing through both this resistor and this resistor is 0.227 amps. And the question, of course, wanted the amount of current flowing through the 20 ohm resistor. So the answer to part B of the question will be the 0.227 amps.